Hey everybody, happy Monday. Hope you're all doing well out there. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at something a little bit different than normal. Uh, today we're actually gonna take a look at something that I guess you could call like a, um, a marketplace of apps that you'll install on your server. So uh, it's called Tyson or Tysoon. I'm guessing it's Tyson. Uh, so let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at Tyson. Okay guys, so here we are on my desktop and uh, here is their website. It says, meet Tyson, a single server Docker management for humans, which I feel is just a bunch of words in a row that don't mean anything, um, but that's okay. Uh, if you wanna check out their website, you can definitely do that. There'll be a link to that in the blog post, linked in the description down below. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of skip over their website um, just cause we don't necessarily need it. But what we are gonna do is head over here to hub.docker.com uh, where of course the fine folks over at Linux have created their own system to install this. So, or the fine folks over at Linux server, I guess I should get my words out. It's only a quarter to six in the morning and I don't have any coffee in me yet. So uh, here we are, we're taking a look at hub.docker.com, uh, Linux servers, Tyson. Uh, we'll scroll down here a little bit and we'll see that it looks like this is supported on ARM as well as desktop processors. So shouldn't be any issues there. Uh, we've got uh, a script here to run uh, just in a shell command, but uh, we like to do things in stacks when we can. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll jump over here to uh, Portainer uh, and we'll click in here so that we can get to stacks and we'll click on add a stack and we'll paste this in. Now I currently don't have anything on this server. It's pretty much wiped out clean. Um, I only do that because the, the development server, it's kind of low spec. I don't want a bunch of stuff running on there screwing things up for me. Uh, so you can run this with lots of other stuff running on it if you want to. I've got it running on my main production server, but uh, I just wanted to have a clean slate to start with for this. Uh, again, this will work if you've got other things running. Uh, just make sure that uh, you've got nothing running on port 3000. Uh, you probably don't, but if you do, you can change uh, this value right here, this first 3000. You can change that to basically whatever you want. Uh, and really that's the only thing you'll need to change in here because even the volumes you're mounting, uh, the Docker socket to itself to give access to the server, the hardware, uh, that sort of thing. So basically you shouldn't need to do anything other than just copy and paste this one in. Uh, then when you're ready, you can scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Uh, we'll give this a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm not actually sure how big this file is. I forgot to check before I got started here. So we'll give this a minute to do its thing and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so that went pretty quickly. So let's come over here and click on that. And then we'll take a look at the logs. Uh, it says it's listening on port 3000, services are done. So uh, that being said, uh, let's go take a look at port 3000 here. All right, so it is up and running. So uh, your first screen is gonna kind of give you an overview of uh, what's going on on your server. Uh, what we're mostly interested in right here is the stacks button. Right now it says there's nothing running, that's correct. But what we can do next is click on browse stacks. And uh, so they've got, all kinds of different applications in here that they have configured to basically be uh, a pretty simple launch here. So um, <clears throat> let's take a look uh, just for the sake of it. And let's install Heimdall just real quickly here. Um, here it's got a bunch of install instructions. Um, and it tells you if you're on this device, do this, if you're on that device, do that. Uh, so basically all you've got to do is give it a name. Oops, Heimdall. And uh, then you wanna give it a port, uh, let's call it 9001. Um, user ID uh, is probably going to be uh, 1000 for both of those, um, but uh, let's see if it actually says anything here. It does not. Um, so uh, probably 1000, I'm gonna put in 998 and 100 uh, just because I know my system uh, pretty well. Um, and so let's change mountain. So the configuration director, you're actually gonna have to uh, jump over to um, Open Media Vault. Sorry, I had a blank moment there. It's Again, it's way too early for me to be doing this stuff. Uh, so let's change that to 481. And I'll get logged in here. And then I'm gonna come over here to uh, Shared Folders. And here I've got a configuration folder here, so I'll go ahead and click on inspect. 
Just gonna grab that, I'll come back over, I'll paste that in, and I'll add uh, Heimdall to that. And then we should be pretty much good to go there. Um, so this is kind of, it's kind of like doing a stack, um, and, but all you've got to do is just kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know we love to do stacks on this channel. Uh, and normally this is all stuff that you would have to change in the stack anyway. Uh, they've just kind of made it a little easier. So uh, we'll go ahead and click on create here. Uh, here it says it's pulling. Uh, now it's downloading everything and we'll give this a minute to do its thing. And then uh, when this is done, uh, we should be able to jump over to port 9001. It looks like it was done pretty quickly there. So uh, let's uh, jump over here. We'll go to port 9001. Oops, wow, no. I sure screwed that up. 9001. So let's come back over here. And the nice thing is uh, when you uh, do that, everything does show up in Portainer here. So, okay, so that's why it didn't work. It's still creating a key here. Uh, so let's give this a while to create its app key and then we'll come back and check this out again. Actually, you know what, while it's doing that, let's let's talk about some stuff in here. So uh, it, it's kind of nice that you can basically just choose any of the applications in here that you'd like. Uh, click on, you know, configure and launch fill in the blanks, uh, which is super easy there, obviously. And then once it's launched, once it's been created and pulled and whatnot, Portainer is then smart enough to then pull it in so you can manage it there if you'd like. Um, but it's kind of funny here, uh, if we scroll down, I don't remember where it is, it's in here somewhere. Uh, you can actually install, there it is, Portainer uh, in, or you can install Portainer from uh, this application, this Tyson application. Um, so, this doesn't necessarily have to be installed at Open Media Vault. Uh, you could just install this in a straight up Docker installation, uh, but then you could install Portainer pretty easily uh, if you wanted to manage things that way. Um, so let's see uh, how things are going here. Still thinking, um, but it's got a great assortment of applications here. Uh, let's scroll down, uh, Jacket and Tautuli for Plex. Uh, organizer, uh, looks like it's got all kinds of really good stuff in here. And it looks like there's three pages here. So we'll go ahead and click on next. We've got Nginx, Muxymux. A lot of these I've actually already done videos on. Uh, not all of them, obviously, but but a lot of them I have done videos on. Um, and so that would make it definitely easier for somebody who who's still intimidated by stacks, that sort of thing. Uh, of course, you're gonna have to do a stack once to get this installed. Um, but once you've got that done, uh, you know you can just come over here and click on configure and launch. Uh, fill in the, uh, the the empty blanks here and click on create. Um, so I think maybe there's a little, uh, little uh, nicer uh, or less of a barrier to entry there for some people. Uh, again, I do definitely recommend uh, getting familiar with uh, different ways to install things. Uh, the more ways you can be comfortable installing things, the better you'll have a chance to be able to troubleshoot something if something goes wrong because you have a better understanding of what's going on on your system. So uh, I think that's about, oh, no, of course, as I say that, looks like it is all done there. So let's refresh. And there we go. Now Heimdall is installed. Uh, if you want to know more about how to configure Heimdall, I made a video about that that I'll also have linked in the description down or in the blog post linked in the description down below. Um, so let's take a look at one other one just real, real quick uh, just to do that. Let's do this. Um, let's take a look here at Fresh RSS. Um, standard port here. Let's call this 9002. Uh, let's come back. Oops, nope, cancel. Uh, let's grab that shared folder again because uh, I didn't save it. Grab this. Oops. Copy that. We'll paste that. Oops, that's not it. Paste that and we'll append that with a fresh RSS uh, 998 and 100. Um, and then we'll say I'm in mountain time and we'll click on create. And we'll give this just a second to do what it needs to do here. And again, done pretty quickly, but let's go back over to Portainer. Uh, let's take a look at our containers here. There, it's already pulled in again. Uh, so we'll take a look. It looks like it's all started. It's already started all of the services there. Uh, so let's change this to 9,000, oops, and uh, two. 
and there's fresh RSS just like that. Okay guys, there you go. There's how to install Tyson uh, and install applications. Uh, there, there are more things that you can do with that and we're gonna take a look at that in a future video. Uh, but I wanted to show how to use it as a marketplace for the time being. Uh, it, it also does, like I said, remote desktops, uh, things like that. But I, I wanted to kind of keep this one on topic as far as application installation was concerned. So uh, may, the, the, the Tyson application here makes installing other applications really, really easy. So I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It helps out the channel quite a bit these days. Uh, so definitely do that if, uh, if the video is helpful. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, want to be notified when other videos like it come out, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, I've got other videos planned and coming very soon. Uh, obviously, we've got to do another video so I can show you some of the other uh, things that Tyson can do. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything there. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there are a couple of different links in the description down below uh, where you can support the channel uh, through either coffee, which is kind of like a one-time tip jar, but you can subscribe. There's just no perks like there are on Patreon. Um, but with Patreon, of course, if you subscribe at the five or $10 level, you will get access to a uh, patrons only Discord server where we can hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. So I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.